H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. This is my email address, priya at h2kinfosys.com. And in case you have any sort of technical issues, you have to call this number 770-777-1269. So this is a software testing course that we are conducting. And after the completion of this course, you'll be able to work as a software tester in the IT projects. Now, before I start, a couple of instructions to all of you. All the participants will be on mute. In case you have any questions, you're going to use a chat box. Whenever we are discussing something, you have to pay attention. Once I'm done, I'll give you some time to ask your questions and then to make your notes. Okay. So we'll be discussing the basics here, the software engineering basics, because testing is not an independent activity. Moreover, being an IT professional, you should understand how the software projects are going to work. So we are going to discuss the basics first. And I guess everybody has seen our syllabus on our website. It is www.h2kinfosys.com. We have the courses tab under which we have the quality assurance training. So you can check the syllabus there. Right from the basics means right from what is the meaning of software. We cover many advanced topics with the different testing tools, the projects, and then um, the manual testing documentation. Everything is covered as a part of this QA course. So I guess everybody understands what is the meaning of software. It is a set of programs that is developed for a specific purpose. And we have several examples of the software here. Like we have the Gmail, the GoToMeeting software that you are using currently. Then we have the online shopping sites, internet banking application, mobile application. So if you just look around you, you find plenty of examples of the software. And software is applicable to any kind of domain that you can name or any industry that you can name. Now we have the different steps here in order to develop the software and we call it as SDLC. SDLC means it is software development life cycle. It is a step by step approach to develop the software. And we start with the requirement gathering here. Then we have the planning, analysis, design of the software, development, testing, deployment. Deployment of the software means installation of the software on the client computers and then we have the UAT that is user acceptance testing. So you go to any kind of IT projects. These are the standard steps that are followed in the IT companies in order to develop the software. So now we will see how the testing has to be done here. Now can all of you tell me participants, what is the meaning of software testing? So do you see here, we have the testing step and this entire QA course is all about the software testing. Okay. Now can all of you tell me participants, what do you understand by software testing? Yes. What is the meaning of software testing? See, all of you have been doing the testing basically in the real time, in your real life scenarios. All right. Now, for example, let's say you're purchasing a simple food item. While you're purchasing, you check it, you verify it and then purchase. For example, for a food item, you check it. I mean, if it's a packed food, you check its nutrition content. You check um, the expiry date. You check whether it is sealed and packed properly or not. What are the ingredients of it? What type of preservatives have been used? Okay. Is it going to be good for good to the health of your kids, your family? So you check that before you purchase, correct? Whether it is from a trusted brand or not. You check before you purchase, right? Now let's consider any high-end products. For example, uh, let's say you want to purchase a car. So before you purchase a car, you do a lot of online um, review check. You talk to your friends and relatives who own similar kind of product. 
and also you want to take a test drive before you want to purchase it so do you see participants before you purchase any kind of product or a service as a common person you have been checking the products or services correct now the same concept you should apply it to the software as well to the it as well here also the testing has to be done but it is done in much more planned and organized manner here we have some kind of testing tools here we have the different types of testing the different features have to be tested we have the standard methodologies and procedures in order to do the testing there are standard tools available so basically it is done in much more planned organized and a technical manner okay so can you apply the same knowledge of your testing to the software as well and tell me what do you understand by software testing yes you can write your answers on the chat box and lippy i got an email from h2k that uh, you had some issues in you know communicating on the chat box so can you please check lippy if your chat box is working because whatever questions i get on the chat box i directly put it on the screen in case if your question is getting missed it means your question is not received is not received by me okay so lippy please check if your chat box is working write some message to me on the chat box i will check it yes participants tell me what do you understand by software testing everybody can try to answer i am not looking for a perfect or a correct answer whatever you know make an attempt okay but i definitely want you to make an attempt yes now i can see your messages lippy and make sure that you write your questions once i'm done with the discussion so that i can have a look at it because while discussing i would be on the other screen that time the chat box is not visible so once i'm done with the discussion you can start posting your questions okay fine so participants tell me what do you understand by software testing okay so i can see some of the answers here how the product requests by the customers yes very good to check the quality of the code developed identify the defects yes very good so basically software testing means it is to identify the defects in the software and also verify the compliance of the software with client requirements so here software testing means it is not just to identify the defects but we should also make sure that we are meeting the requirements of the client okay so this is how the testing is defined now the testing can be done in the different levels and also there are different types of testing first of all we'll have a look at the different test levels and also we will discuss the different types of testing okay before that i want you to make a note of this definition of software testing all of you please make note of the software testing definition so testing is not just to identify the defects but we should also make sure that we are meeting the requirements of the client yes let me know once you are done participants so that we can proceed everybody is done with the definition okay now the next one the test levels so testing can be broadly classified into testing can be broadly classified into static testing and dynamic testing so we have the static testing and then dynamic testing here the dynamic testing is further classified into white box testing and black box testing and then the white box testing it is further classified into the unit testing and then integration testing 
so we have the unit or the component testing here and then we have the integration testing in the black box testing we have the system testing and then user acceptance testing And in the user acceptance testing, we have the alpha testing and then the beta testing. Okay. So what is static testing? Static testing means participants. It is the review of the project documents. Review of the project documents by the QA. Dynamic testing means here we will execute or run the actual software and do the testing. White box testing means here the program level testing is done and then black box testing means we test the actual software without getting into the programming aspects of the project. Unit or the component testing is done by the developers. Integration testing is also done by the developers. System testing is done by the QA and UAT is done by the real users. And alpha testing, if the real users do the testing in our IT environment, we call it as alpha testing. If the testing is done in a real environment by the real users, then we call it as a beta testing. Now this entire QA course is all about the system testing because this is a type of testing that is mainly done by the software testers, means the QA team. So our entire course will be focused here. So we will see what are the different types of testing, what are the different steps and then documents that are created for the testing, what are the different testing tools that are used for the software testing, what features of the software can be tested by the QA. We'll have a look at it in very much detail. Okay, so this entire QA course is all about the system testing. Now all of you please take a screenshot of my screen and I'm going to explain each of these in detail. You can take a screenshot of my screen. I will explain each of these in detail. Have you taken the screenshot? Okay, take a screenshot participants, I'm waiting. And I'm going to explain each of these testing levels in detail, okay? Fine, so let's start with the static testing. Under this testing levels, we have the static testing and then we have the dynamic testing. <clears throat> so first, let's have a look at the static testing. Now there are different steps of the software development that I had listed right in the beginning of today's session. We have these well-defined steps to develop the software. And then there are different documents that are created in each of these steps. We start with the requirement gathering. In the requirement gathering, the business analyst will meet the client, gather the project information and then document it in the business requirement document. Then there is a planning by the project manager and then the project manager prepares the plan for the project. And after this step, we have the analysis. Means each and every requirement is explained here in detail. We call this document as functional specification document. The architect will design the software, means will create the programming structure here. The document that is created, we call it as a design document. And after the design phase, we have the development. The developers will refer to the design document 
and then write the programs that are mentioned here in this design document. So the next step is programming. The program file or the source code documents are created here. After the development, the QA team has to perform the testing. And as a QA, you're, you're going to prepare the test documents here. The different kind of test documents will be prepared by the testers for the testing purpose. And then the software will be deployed into the client environment the document that is created here, it is called as an installation manual. This will have the different steps for the installation of the software and also the system configuration. And then we have the user acceptance testing wherein the real users will check the software and then the document that is created is called as a user manual. So do you see participants? The point here is there are different steps in order to develop the software and in each of the steps there are different documents that are getting created right and while we create these different documents we are referring to the documents of the previous phases and in case if you have any kind of errors in the business requirement document can you tell me how does it affect rest of the project let me repeat in case you have any sort of errors in the business requirement document can you tell me how does it affect rest of the project Now, in case if there are any errors in the business requirement document, these errors will get into the next step. Plus, there are new errors in the document. And this will lead to many defects in the software. The time that is required and also the cost that is involved in order to identify and fix the defects also will be high. And what about the quality of the software? The quality will be poor. So what is the solution? Solution is you'll have to review. Review the documents at each and every step here. identify and eliminate the errors by doing this you are able to reduce the number of defects the time and cost of the project will also reduce and then the quality will improve so what is static testing static testing means it is review of project documents to identify the errors by the QA. For example, missing information kind of errors can be identified easily and accept the program files. As a QA, you can review any of the documents over here. And basically it is not practically possible that you identify each and every error because you are not meeting the client anyways. But then, based on your skills, based on your experience, you can identify as many number of errors as possible. And also, even if you identify all the errors, the number of defects will not come down to zero. But then you can reduce them considerably. Okay? You can reduce them considerably. So this is the purpose of the static testing. Now you can go through this participants. And then I will tell you what are the different techniques of static testing. So these are the questions that I could see on the chat box. Review the requirement gathering is done by the QA also. Yes, all the requirements that are gathered by the business analyst as a QA, you need to review them. So you have to go through the documents and find out if there are any inconsistent steps or any incomplete information. Sometimes input specifications might be missing. There might be... Um, unclear requirements or the description okay the diagrams may not be correct or they might be improper so such kind of errors you can identify as a QA by reviewing the requirement documents then when does the static testing happen 
Static testing happens right after the documents are available. So once the business requirement document is available from the beginning of the software development, you can start with your review activities. Who does the testing? So it is clearly mentioned here. It is done by the QA team. Actually, the review can be done by anybody in the team. Everybody will do the review. The developers will review the programs. BA will review the requirement documents. But again, we are talking from the QA perspective. The QA is going to formally review all the documents of the project. Okay, and it comes under the static testing. So you can say static testing is done by the QA team here as a part of the testing basically. Okay. When we do the review, the moment the new documents are available, or let's say there is some new information that is getting updated in the document, the review can be conducted. Are all the documents ready before the static testing? No. As and when the documents are ready, you can do the review. Let's say BRD is available, you review. After that, FSD is available, then you review. At every step, you'll have to conduct the review process so that these errors will not go into the further steps. The benefits of the static testing I've mentioned here, Nassim. So you can see that by identifying the errors means by doing the static testing, we are able to Reduce the number of defects considerably. This will also help us to reduce the time and cost of the project and then the quality of the software is going to improve. Okay. Now I will show you what are the different techniques that are available in order to perform the static testing. So in the static testing, we have the informal review. Then we have the formal or the inspection. We have the formal or the inspection. And then we have the walkthrough. Now informal review as the name itself suggests that it is informal in nature means any QA can review any documents anytime during the projects any documents anytime during the project and there is no need to send any kind of updates No monitoring is required here. It is inexpensive way of testing the software. For example, let's say in order to write the test documents, we refer to the functional specification document that is created by the business analyst. And here before Using this document for our test documents, we are going to review the specification document so that these errors do not get into our test documents. So this is the informal review. Then we have the formal or the inspection over here. We have a test leader who will act as a moderator. The test leader will plan and control all the activities of the testing. Means the inspection. The test leader or the moderator will decide what documents have to be tested by which tester. Means the assignment of the documents. And the roles to the different QAs is done by the moderator. The rules and the checklist will be provided by the test leader based on which the review has to be done. And all the reviewers means all the testers will have to review the documents that are assigned to them based on the rules and checklists that are given. Make the list of errors and then come prepared to the review meeting that will be conducted by the moderator.
the moderator will conduct the review meeting and all the testers should identify the errors and come prepared to the meeting and during this review meeting all the errors will be discussed and whatever is being discussed here will get documented by a person called as a scribe scribe is a role that is assigned to one of the qa in the team it could be assigned to any tester it could be assigned to you as well and what is your task you have to make the notes in the meeting you must have seen any sort of formal meetings so in any sort of formal meetings there are discussions being done important decisions are being taken and there are so many meetings that will be conducted how do you remember what was discussed in which meeting what decisions were made by referring to these documents okay so all the discussions should get documented here by one of the person in the team means the qa in the team this person will be called as a scribe and what is the purpose of these documents they can be used for the future reference and after the review meeting there is follow up of errors there is follow up of errors and all the reviewers means all the qas in the team will submit the review report to the moderator or the test leader 